Morning folks and welcome back. Uh, this week Maggie and I have come for a short canoe paddle um, to a little island that, uh, that I know of, a little, um, a little secret spot and uh, we're going to be cooking up a stew this week, uh, a rabbit stew. So I'm going to be using one of my wood gasifying stoves today and uh, based on comments I had from my last video which was all about stoves in general I'm going to give it a try with um, wooden pellets today um, they're sold as cat litter um, and uh, you know you get them in big bags and they're just um, they're just yeah recycled wooden uh, pellets made from sawdust um, and uh, obviously they work really well as cat litter but they're a fuel and they work really well uh, in these wood gas stoves, so I'm told. So I'm gonna give that a go. Now the problem I have is that the holes in the bottom of the um, stove are too big and the pellets will just fall right, right through. So um, I, this morning, had to run and grab uh, one of those disposable barbecues and excuse the crude shape here, but I just had to literally cut it in the car park before I got in the water with the canoe um, and make a, a kind of like a a mesh to stop them all falling through the bottom. So that's what that's for. Um, when I have a bit more time, I'll, I'll make one, um, you know, a little bit neater and better. I don't really know how much to put in, so I'm gonna kind of half fill it. Now, uh, I've also been told that um, the alcohol hand gel that you get, you know, the, the uh, antibacterial stuff, um, is really good at getting this stuff going. So I've got some here. This, this is just a Life Venture branded one, but it's the same stuff, you know, any of that um, alcohol hand gel. Squirt a bit on the top and light it up. Right, while the stove's coming up to temperature, I thought I'd run through what's going in this stew. Um, so the uh, main event is uh, a nice three-quarters size bunny rabbit, which was shot by my good friend Tim yesterday. Um, he very kindly shot it and uh, I went and picked it up this morning. Um, it was a good clean head shot, so there shouldn't be any shot in the body at all, which is great. Um, so I'm going to cut that up into pieces, um, just so that I haven't got a faff around with picking bones out. So I'll, um, you know, I'll literally just get the meat off the bone. Um, now rabbit. As I'm sure you know, there's barely any barely any fat on a rabbit at all. So I've got some uh, some French garlic saucisson sec. So it's a it's a dried sausage, um, which is going to go in as well, just to put a bit of fat in the in the stew and give it a bit of uh, nice garlicky flavour. Um, I've got one carrot, one onion. Uh, I've got a stock pot. Oops. This is a a knorr or nor, however you pronounce it. Um, stock pot these are really really nice bags of flavor in there um, I've got a little bit of oil which I'll cook the um, the rabbit in first before I put the rest of the ingredients in I'm going to kind of fry the rabbit and get a bit of brown it a little bit and get a bit of extra flavor on there um, and then to finish it off I've got a whole load of nettles uh, just because this island that I'm on at the moment is covered in them um, and it seemed daft not to use them while they're here and it'll add a nice bit of greenery and uh, and some vitamins and things into the stew which is good and uh, really what I wanted to do, the whole purpose of me doing the rabbit stew was to see how it works with blackberries. I love blackberries. Uh, they're one of those fruits that, you know, obviously you get late summer, early autumn, um, and they're packed full of sugar. They're a really nice sugary burst, really nice sugary hit. Um, and, uh, and I thought they might go quite nice with the gamey flavor of the rabbit. So we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna put them in towards the end so they don't just disappear completely. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes.
There you go, that's not too bad. That's a fairly decent amount of meat for, for Maggie and I for a stew. That'll do just the job. I'm gonna get some oil in there and get that on to fry. In with the onions and sausage. It smells good. Okay, the onions and sausage have had about five minutes. Um, they're just starting to, onions are just starting to go sort of transparent. So, um, I'm going to put the carrots in, minus that bit of mud. And the stock pot. And then the water. So there's enough water in there to bring it, to bring the billy can up to about half full. I reckon that'll probably, I reckon that'll probably do the job. Got a drink, Max. Well, if only you could smell this. It smells so good. I'm gonna try mine while uh, Maggie's is cooling down a bit. Oh, the sauce is absolutely delicious. I know a lot of that is the stock because those stock cubes are really good, but there's definitely sweetness from the blackberries. And it's a very subtle taste of blackberry, but it's there, it's definitely there. Try the rabbit. Mm. That's lovely. It's actually really tender. I've had rabbit many times before, and sometimes it can be it can be a bit on the tough side. And whether that's due to it just being an older mm. rabbit or um, or being cooked too quickly, I don't know. But this is really nice. And the blackberries in there are just lovely. The nettles. There's not a lot of flavour from the nettles, to be honest, but um, it looks nice, and I know that there's goodness in them. Okay, I'm going to give Maggie hers. Okay, hang on. Wait, wait. There you go, girl.
So as for using uh, these wood pellets as fuel, um, it did pretty well really. Um, it certainly burnt for quite a long time, um, but I did have problems with it um, blocking the air holes at the bottom of the stove, um, which caused the, the fire to kind of dwindle really. Uh, there just wasn't enough air getting down there. So I don't know how well you can see that, but right down the bottom of the stove here, there are um, a series of larger air holes which run around the bottom. Um, and I found that the, the wood pellets kind of disintegrate as they burn. They, they go back to their original state, which was basically sawdust. And then you kind of end up with a solid mass of sawdust at the bottom of the stove, which blocks up these holes. And I was having to, fight, I was having to poke twigs through to clear the air holes as it was burning. Um, now I think I could probably come up with a modification that would sort that out, and that's just to have a little bit of that wire mesh that I put in the bottom of the stove, just to have a cylinder of it, which slots down in there with a, with a disc which goes on the bottom, which will A, stop the pellets from poking out through the holes, but also it will just give a little bit of clearance. It'll, it'll just keep them away from the edge of that sort of fire basket that's down there in the bottom of the stove. And hopefully that should, um, that should stop that happening in future. But it certainly does burn well, um, and it burns good and long. Uh, you know, just using twigs alone in these things, they, they, they only burn for so long and you have to keep feeding them. I've been given quite a few bits of advice on using these a bit more efficiently, um, and that is to, to preload it with wood, to, to stack all your sticks in and pack them in tightly, upright, vertically, um, and then light a fire on the top and that will burn down and you've got sort of more of a mass, if you like, rather than just, um, you know, feeding twigs in individually like you would with, um, with, a, with any other kind of stick stove you know so they they do work slightly differently but yeah they're good and um, the really nice thing about them is that when they're up to temperature um, and that wood gas is burning as well you're getting a really complete burn um, which is cleaner but uh, you know you're also getting more output for the same amount of fuel um, rather than that gas just you know coming off the top of your fire and escaping and not being burnt it's it's being kind of recycled really um, and then brought out through these little holes in the outside and, and burnt on the top of the fire, which is why you get these kind of little jets of flame which come out, come out of these holes here. That's the wood gas, which is burning on top of the, the flames that are burning beneath from the sort of primary combustion of the fuel, if you like. And uh, yeah, it's a really good system, I'm impressed. I just need to tweak it a little bit. Well, thanks for joining us today. We've had a really nice day. It's been lovely to have a little paddle and a paddle with Maggie. Maggie's not been out in the canoe with me for ages and um, she did really well. <laughs> she normally uh, is a nightmare around birds, um, in particular swans and geese, I think because they make a bit of a racket um, and they hiss and they, they sometimes you spook them and they, they take off quite suddenly from the water and make a lot of noise and, and that really gets her excited. And, on more than one occasion she's jumped out of the canoe you know nearly tipping us over and you know it's, it's always a little bit of a worry but today she was she's been brilliant we, we were really close to two swans on the on the paddle in um, and uh, you know she just watched them and she was great <laughs> she didn't try and chase them she didn't try and eat them so uh, yeah really good so Maggie definitely deserved her bit of rabbit stew today that's for sure thanks Tim for the rabbit it was exactly as you said it would be, perfect. Being a sort of quite a young, three quarters grown rabbit, it was lovely and tender and delicious. We really enjoyed it, so thanks. So we're gonna get ourselves packed up and, uh, and head off back home. 
thanks for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed the video. And don't forget, blackberries really do go very well with rabbit. Cheers.